Kamari students. Good morning, students. How was your weekend? Hope oh, fine. We are starting today's lesson. Topic, cell and its environment. Get your pencil ready, biro and paper. So we start. Our objective for the week, for the lesson is, at the end of this lesson, we should be able to define osmosis. We should be able to define osmosis, explain and define diffusion, list the rate of diffusion, and list the factors affecting the rate of diffusion. The cell of an organism is always surrounded by a watery environment. That means every cell has an environment in which it lives or where it can be found. In this case, mostly aquatic. The two processes that brings about the exchange of materials in the environment are diffusion and osmosis. What we mean by that is that how gases moving and out of the cell, they are diffusion and osmosis. The definition of osmosis, how do we define osmosis? Osmosis can be defined as a net movement of substance, ions, molecules, or atom, from a region of higher concentration, let's note that, region of higher concentration gradient, to region of low concentration gradient. It is also the movement of substance down the concentration gradient. It is a form of passive transport as it does not require energy. What that is telling us is that osmosis, diffusion, energy is not required. The rate of diffusion R in a given direction across the exchange surface area is directly proportional to the surface area, directly proportional to the concentration gradient, and inversely proportional to the distance, and that is what we call Fick's law. Some factors make diffusion possible. Those are the factors that affect the fission. One of them is temperature. They are the temperature, they are the rate of diffusion, that is rate of movement. The size of particles also affect diffusion. How do we mean? The larger the size, the higher the rate of diffusion. State of matter is another one. What are the states of matter? We have three states of matter. Solid, liquid, and gas. The rate of diffusion of gas is higher than that rate of diffusion of other particles. That means gases move faster. You can notice a gas when you are not even present in the site of leakage because it is carried by air. The nature of material meaning the denser the material, the slower the rate of diffusion. The two processes, diffusion and osmosis, permeable membrane is required in one. The other permeable membrane is not required. Let us now see what permeable membrane is. A membrane is slightly and partially permeable. That is, it allows materials to pass through. Many materials can pass through them, but some substances cannot. A permeable membrane does not allow every material to go in. It is selectively permeable, because we say it's selectively permeable. Some substances, such as hormones, oxygen, and carbon dioxide, are dissolved in the membrane. So those ones will pass through. These dissolved substances diffuse rapidly to the cell 
membrane because they are gases, most of them are gases. That is why they can pass through the membrane easily. Active transport is another method by which substances move in and out of cell. Active transport is the process that moves materials across the plasma membrane. During the active process, the materials move against the concentration gradients and it's moved from a region of lower concentration to the region of higher concentration. There are two types of active transport. We have endocytosis and we have ectocytosis. We'll explain those ones in the next slide. Now, what do we mean by endocytosis? Endocytosis occur when a cell actively takes large molecules into itself by folding the plasma membrane. That is, by, 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 by the plasma membrane being curved inward. Endocytosis are of three forms. We have the phagocytosis, pinocytosis, and receptor-mediated endocytosis. Now the diagram here shows endocytosis. Here we can see the membrane. The arrow upwards, the endocytosis, we can see the membrane coming out, showing materials out of the membrane. This is it, membrane. We can see the materials going out, I mean, going inside the membrane. Then for exotysosis, we can see the materials coming up. Exocytosis is the opposite of endocytosis. It occurs when a cell is actively released, actively release large molecules by folding membrane outward. When a cell releases large molecules of substance by folding outward, by releasing it outward, vacuoles move to the surface membrane. That is the vacuole inside the cell come to the surface of the membrane fuses with it and release its contents to the exterior. The contents are released outside, as we have seen in the, in the last diagram. Now this shows ectocytosis. You can see the materials coming out of the membrane. Our advisors let us study this diagram very well. Example of diffusion process in living organisms. Now, diffusion will occur in living organisms. What do we call living organisms? Living organisms are plants and animals. It occurs in living organisms, it occurs in non-living organisms. So we want to see example of diffusion in living organisms, such as plants and animals. When nutrients are absorbed, are taken in by organism. An example of the nutrient is mineral salts. So it's an example of the efficient process. Exchange of gases in one celled aquatic organism, such as amoeba, is also a deficient process because amoeba stays in aquatic environment. Gases in and out are done inside that environment. No special organ. Exchange of gases in the cell of plant too is an example of diffusion. That is, transpiration is an example of diffusion. Excretion of waste products is also an example of diffusion process. That is breathing. Breathing. When we breathe in and out, it goes in through diffusion, it comes out through diffusion. Absorption of amino acid, glucose, fatty acid, and glycerol by the small intestine is also by diffusion process. Let us take that again. Absorption of nutrients in organism, such as mineral salts, exchange of gases in one cell organism, as we have in amoeba, is an example of diffusion. Exchange of gases in cell of plant is an example of diffusion. Like I told you, transpiration is one of them. Excretion of waste products is also an example of diffusion. Absorption of amino acid is an example of diffusion. What are the features that make diffusion possible? Diffusion cannot take place without some features. 
That environment that where the fishing has to take place must be a large surface place. A large surface place. It must not be a very enclosed area. A flattened body, like we have in the case of earthworm. A branch body system, like we have in the case of flatworm. And then the body surface of hydra. The fission will take place in all these surfaces. Now, another example of where cells are placed is osmosis. Osmosis and diffusion, there are two processes that occur in living organisms. Osmosis can be defined as a movement of water molecules from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration through a semipermeable membrane. You will see that our definition of osmosis involves movement of water molecules, not ions. It is diffusion that ions are being moved. That is one difference between the two. Then the second one is that osmosis will move from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. Diffusion does not require a semi-permeable membrane. Osmosis is a passive process, like that of diffusion. Osmosis will occur in animal cells, in one single aquatic organism, like we have in Amoeba. The, the water in which the cell is placed, or the environment in which the cells are placed, are of three types. We have the isotonic solution. What do we call isotonic solution? A solution where the solute concentration and the solvent concentration are the same. When cells are placed in this solution, there is no net movement. Net mo there is no net movement of water in and out of the cell. It means water will not move in and will not move out. Hypotonic solution. Hypotonic solution is a solution where the solute concentration and the solvent concentration are different. An animal plays in a isotonic solution, hypotonic solution. That is, a very dilute medium liquid which has higher concentration of higher concentration than that of the cytoplasm. When cell is placed in isotonic solution, water enters the cell, thereby making the volume of water in the cell increase. As a result, the cell will increase in size. The cell will increase in size. If the cell cannot eliminate the water, then the red blood cell cannot burst. This is the diagram of isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic solution. Now you see in the diagram that water under hypotonic solution are coming out of the cell. They are coming out of the cell. As a result, the cell will do what? The cell will plasmolize. The size of the cell will reduce, will shrink as a result of water coming out of the cell. Now in an isotonic solution, that is the solution with equal concentration of solute and solvent. There is flaccidity. Water moves in out of the cell. But during hypotonic solution, water goes in and the cell becomes hard. The cell becomes hard. That's what we mean by hypotonic solution. Animal cell plays in this type of solution, that is hypertonic solution, has to cope with the risk of losing water because water enters the cell. If the external solution has a higher solute concentration, what do we mean by external solution? The solution in which the cell is placed has a higher concentration of solute that is solid. The water, it, its water potentials will be lower. That is, water will be lower in the cell. Water will tend to be drawn. Water will be removed out of the cell to cause that plasmolysis. Osmosis in plant cell 
Plant cells behave in the same way as animal cells. That is, they can either be placed in isotonic, hypertonic, and hypotonic solution. In hypotonic solution, water enters the plant cell, filling the vacuum, making it to become turgid. The surface, the cell surface membrane pushes against the cell wall. That is when water enters the cell, in an attempt to make it burst, it pushes the cell wall, making the cell wall to be what? Rigid, to be very, very hard. A cell in this condition is said to be turgid, that is, begin to be hard. In hypertonic solution, water moves out of the plant cell. Hypertonic solution means solution with higher concentration of solute, that is solid, soft, dissolving it. The cell membrane pulls away from the cell wall. The cell becomes flaxid, losing water to the surrounding. Example of osmosis in plants we have when the root takes in water, when we have plasmolysis in the plant cell, that is when plant cell loses water. Movement of water from one cell to the other is also an example of osmosis in plants. Maintenance of sugar pressure is also one. Opening and closing of stomata for diffusion is also an example of osmosis in plants. As osmosis occur in plants, so we have it occurring in animals. That is during excretion, when kidney tubules reabsorb water. We have it in the hemolysis, in the red blood cell, during osmoregulation in amoeba and paramecium. Then in the maintenance of shape of mammal mammalian cells through tissue fluid. Now we have assignments for the topic. We need to explain the term osmosis and diffusion. Give three examples each of osmotic process and the official process in plants. I will take it again. Explain the following terms. Osmosis. A. B. Diffusion. Two. Give three examples each of diffusion and osmosis in plants. For our further Readings, we need to read the following. Turgidity and its importance in plant cell. Hemolysis, flaxidity, hemolysis, flaxidity, plasmolysis, and crenation. You read on this, get familiar with them, and make sure you understand the processes. Thank you. Any question before we call it a day? Yes. Differences between osmosis and diffusion. Now, when you look at the definition given by us, we said osmosis is the movement of water molecules from the region of a lower concentration to the region of higher concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. Now, when you look at that definition, you can bring out three facts that differentiate osmosis from diffusion. Now, let me tell the definition of diffusion so that we can bring out the differences. Diffusion, we say, is the movement of ions, molecule, from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration until we have even diffusion of the 
gas. So now, when you look at those definitions, the differences are clear. Osmosis requires a semi-permeable membrane. It is the movement of water from a region of lower to region of higher. The fusion gases ions are moved from a region of higher to region of lower. So you can get three differences from the definition of these two terms. Understand? It's okay. Thank you very much.